Welcome to OAA Now, your home for Oakland Activities Association news and information. Here's your host, Sammy Taramina. Welcome to OAA Now here. I'm Sammy Taramina, blogger of the Dragons Insider, blogger of Inside the OAA, and one of the hosts between Taramina's on Orient Neighborhood Television. I'd like to welcome those watching on the local voice on SoundCloud and also those watching on YouTube as well. Of course, um, of course, um, I'm back in the studio here after a um, just a hellacious event with the coronavirus. Um, encouraging everybody to get vaccinated. I mean, like um, this thing, you don't want this thing at all. You really don't want this thing at all. Um, this week on the pod, we're going to talk a lot about um, about, of course, Harper Woods' move to the OAA. Um, we're going to recap that. Also, we're going to talk. Um, New Bible coach at Clarkson, and we're going to talk about that as well. And also my um, spring sports um, top five that I just released the other day on my blog. It's Amy semicolon termina blogspot.com. So we got a lot to look at. Um, when you look at, of course, the, um, a lot of things have been going on surrounding the, um, of course, the spring sports season. Of course, we did talk a lot about basketball during the, winter months and then of course we talked football obviously um but we got a lot of other sports to look at as well especially in spring sports considering you got considering that you got um foot i mean like you got softball you got soccer you got track and field you got baseball i mean tennis and golf i mean like a water polo i mean you got a lot of things going on um let's look at our main story obviously of course um is the news that the OA was is going to get another member into the league, and that is Harper Woods. Um, Harper Woods um, comes in starting effectively next winter, so during the fall season they're going to have um they're going to still be an independent and also be in the Michigan Metro Athletic Conference for the um fall sports. Now I'm not sure how to confirm that, but I know for sure in football they're going to be an independent. But in basketball, especially, they're going to be in the OAA, um, most likely being in the lower divisions. Um, my thoughts on this really has been, um, I'm curious to see how this would work, considering Harper Woods is in the, um, they are in the, you know, they, I mean, of course, they're in Wayne County, um, which is, you know, very unusual for an OAA team to be in a different county. Um, and um, and a lot of people were kind of shocked, you know what I mean, to look at Harper Woods in the OAA, um, going to be in the OAA this upcoming winter. So, you know, and I, a lot of people thought, you know, who knows they were going to go north. They could still go north, um, or but a little more south, especially out of Oakland County. It's kind of a little bit of a head scratcher, but, you know, but that's the direction the league decided to go. So. When you look at a course, um, when you look at a course this year with Harper Woods, um, their boys basketball team really had a down year this year. They were four and um, they were four and nine this year. Um, they just they were last place in the um, in the Michigan Metro Conference. Um, I mean the the two wins were they had, they beat only two teams last year, and that was Detroit University Prep Science and Math and Taylor Prep. Um, well, their girls basketball team was a whole other story. Um, obviously when you look at those type of teams, um, obviously, um, obviously you look at, um, you look at, of course, their, I mean, like Harper Woods is known for their football presence. They're also known for their basketball presence. But when you look at the news of, them coming in, you know, you know that Harper Woods traditionally is a basketball power, and they've shown that on many occasions where um they have been they've been just outstanding, very competitive. Um, so when you look at on the boys' basketball perspective, I mean, they can be they're going to be a team to watch, especially um in the lower division. Um. When you're looking at it, um, and then you look at him on the girls' basketball side. I mean, obviously, this team had a really good year. I mean, seven and three, 
It says a lot. Um, unfortunately, neither team made the playoffs. I mean, like, didn't qualify for the postseason, I think, because of a COVID outbreak surrounding both programs. But um, Harper Woods, I mean, their girls' basketball program was very good. I mean, they were um, they went 7-3, and three, as mentioned. Um, they knocked off um, some really good teams to close out the year in Hamtramck and E-Course. Um, they're well coached under Paul Allen. Um, their um, boys' basketball team, Coach is Brandon J- is Brandon Jenkins, um, and they have a pretty young team. I mean, both teams were very young this year. I mean, you look at both these teams. I mean, like they're gonna have veteran teams, veteran experience. But I'm curious to see how that these teams are gonna adapt. Um, how both their bo- basketball programs are gonna adapt to life in the OAA. Um, and the girls' side of things, I I think you know when you look at on the girls' side, taking on teams like, um, you know, when you look at the gold this year, um, I think it can match up well with against um, teams like Oak Park, Seaholm, um, Farmington. Um, they can match up well. I mean, the, the problem that the question's going to be is, will Pontiac and Ferndale field basketball teams, you know, and then you bring in a team like Harper Woods, who is really experienced, really talented, um, and they could, um, could they be a contender in the lower division? I think they will be. I mean, you know, when you look at Harper Woods, um, and then you look at, obviously, of course, on the boys' side of things, you got to look at, um, okay, Harper Woods is a team that, you know, struggled last year, but they had a really nice, um, they had a ni- they had a nice bounce back here, and I think at the end of the day, when you look at Harper Woods, I mean this team, you know they had a rough year, but normally this team is traditionally pretty good. So, so when you look at it here, I mean, you know from a basketball perspective, it's a good move for the league, you know, to bring them in. Um, the travel could be pretty hectic, especially if you're a northern school. Um, north to Silver Bell Road, especially, could be really hectic. Um, and then of course there's football. I mean, obviously this upcoming fall, Harper Woods will not be in the league, but in 2022, 2023, they will be, um, in the league and, you know, for the 2022 season, they will be in the league. So, but Harper Woods on a football perspective, this team's, this team, they're going to be in D2 for playoffs, um, with this, with Ferndale, obviously, um, of course, Ferndale is the other school in D2, but actually for basketball, they'll be in D2 for playoffs. Um, For football, I mean, I think they'll be in D2 for playoffs, but when you look at Harper Woods historically, the last three years, they they went 15 and 13. I mean, you know, the record doesn't say much about them, but they made the playoffs three straight years now. 2020, of course, you look at, of course, um, Everybody got in the playoffs, you know, in a COVID-shortened season. But the last two years prior to that, they made the playoffs. And, you know, they ended up, they were in Division Four. Um, they took on, um, they took on Birmingham, Detroit Country Day, and Blue Hills, Cranbrook, Kingswood. Um, and then Division Three, they were, um, they ran into um, Marysville, you know. So when you look at it here, they've been in, the playoffs for um they've been in the postseason for um three of the last um three straight years. I mean like that's not easy to do. So when you really look at it, um it is what is. So obviously um when you look at a t- school like Harper Woods, you know, you bring in that type of football and basketball powers, that's gonna be really important. Now, I'm curious to see what other sports they do. I mean, they do not field a soccer team, a lacrosse team, or a water polo team. And that's a little bit of a concern for me. I mean, like, you know, that they don't field those teams. Now, they offer a lot of other sports like volleyball, um, baseball, softball. Um, I mean, those are the main sports, you know, that they do offer. But, you know, they do have a track program cross country program i mean but i'm curious to see what they're going to do what how they're going to look i mean 
obviously going to a new conference, um, it's never an easy thing. Of course, um, the league did, except for Ferndale University in the league last year. And you look at, of course, what happened with Ferndale University. I mean, you know, Ferndale University, they, they, they were all right in girls basketball, but they really struggled in boys basketball. So when you really look at, and of course, they co-op with Ferndale in a lot of sports. So, so, you know, so it's very interesting to see how I think Harper Woods will fit into this conversation. Um, I think it's going to be really interesting to see how they fit in the OA, you know, um, especially now because now the OA has, the OA is going to have in the future, they're going to have, um, they're going to, I mean, in the future, the OA is going to have um, 22 teams from Oakland County and one from Wayne County. So it's going to be really interesting to see what happens um, with Harper Woods. I mean, now, my thoughts on this, I mean, like, um, I did explain I'm not a huge fan, especially with travel. Um, but, you know, but if you're a school, let's say, south to 12 mile, you know, I think it's a good move, you know what I mean? But if you're a school that is north of 12 mile, you're going like, yeah, I don't know. I mean, but we'll see. I mean, we'll see how how this move will affect the league and all that. So that's the big question that we're going to see going forward. So, you know, so that's going to be the key. I mean, I think that um, I'm curious to see how Harper Woods adapts into the league, um, how they're going to be competitive-wise. Um, can they bring that sort of championship level, um, you know, into the OA? And that's the big question. That's a big question to keep an eye on. So that's my thoughts on Harper Woods coming into the league. Um, a lot to look at. You know, I'm curious to see how they're going to do. Um, I'm just, you know, looking at it from a northern perspective, a southern perspective, a middle perspective. If you are, if you were a school south of 12 Mile, I think this is a really good move to bring in, bring in Harper Woods. But if you're a school that's north of 12 Mile, um, particularly, especially, um, north of Silver Bell Road, um, you're kind of going like, oh boy. So we'll see what happens, how the league's going to go with this. So that's my thoughts on Harper Woods. Um, let's go to, um, let's go to girls volleyball a little bit. We do have a coaching situation here. Um, new head coach, um, over at Clarkston. Um, it is a, um, very, very familiar face for, um, Volleyball for volleyball Pete for volleyball fans. Um um Clarkson named Allison Smith their new head coach. Um I found out from an accurate source about um the hire. Of course, he takes Allison Smith takes over for Kelly Pinner. Um of course Smith, um we know what she did at Mount Pleasant. Um of course Smith is the um husband of Oak current Oakland University men's basketball assistant coach Jeff Smith. Um we all know what Smith did at Mount Pleasant. So when you really look at she she coached junior varsity at Mount at Clarkson last season, but when you look at coaching experience, um, she has that. Um, she went to the state quarterfinals um back in twenty um back in twenty nineteen with the Oilers, um, falling to um Lake Orion at Lapeer. Um, but now you're looking at Smith at Clarkson and. There's a lot more talent at Clarkson than than at Mount Pleasant. I'll tell you that much right now. I mean, like when you really look at the um, talent level compared that with both schools. But when you look at Smith's hire, I mean, like this could be a really this could be an interesting hire. I mean, like this could be a really good hire for Clarkson. I mean, you bring in a coach that has a ton of experience. Um, I know taking over for Coach Kelly Pinner is going to be really, really hard. And that is not an easy, easy, easy um, thing to do at all. I mean, so when you really look at it, um, when you when you look at, of course, taking over for a legend, it's always hard, you know, for the successor, you know, to take over a team. I mean, like, we've seen that on so many occasions. So, but when you look at, when you really look at the, um, this hire, I mean, Smith does bring a ton of experience for a team that 
went to the Final Four last season. Of course, Clarkson did go there. Um, unfortunately, they lost to Birmingham Marion um, last season. Um, when you look at, of course, the um, early thoughts heading into next season, um, a lot of people have compared Clarkston to be the number two team in Oakland County behind Birmingham Marion, um, especially who they got coming back. I mean, they did lose a lot a year ago. Um, but when you do return a um, two players like Skylar Jitus and um, you have Elizabeth Adams and Paige Gedbrook coming back, that's huge. And then you have a incoming transfer. Um, you got a um, you got a um, incoming freshman who's very good. Um, and you got also you got a um, and program strength has also been very very good for Clarkson. So when you really look at the Program strength department for Clarkston. Um, it is very strong. Um, when you look at the Wolves, I mean, they got, they're going to be in the conversation for the red title year in and year out. I mean, and, you know, it's going to be Smith's job to, you know, keep that going, sustain it long term, um, you know, to build that program to where it's been. I mean, you know, in, you look at Clarkston, obviously, um, this team really has, um, you know, Clarkson, they're going to be really good. I mean, I think they're going to be very good, especially when you look at the red division um, next this some fall. I mean, you look at, obviously, you got Lake Orion in that mix, you got Oxford in that mix, Adams in that mix, Stony Creek's there. Um, then you have, of course, Bloompia Hills, Troy, um, both up in the red as well. I mean, like, you know, it's going to be a very interesting ride for Clarkson. I mean, you know, when you look at, of course, um, what they got back. I mean, so when you really look at this hire, I mean, I'm curious to see. I mean, Smith's going to have a ton of talent, and that's not a question. She's going to have a ton of talent. But the question's going to be for Clarkston is you're going to have to have an adjustment period. And unfortunately for Clarkston, that adjustment period is going to have to go throughout the season. And that's going to be a very difficult, slippery slope early. You know, but once they get it together, you know, once they buy in the Smith system, um, and it's going to be a much different system compared to Pinner's system. Um, then I could see Clarkson going on a roll, possibly a postseason run, very similar to that when they went to the Final Four a year ago. And I think that's something that a lot of people look at with Clarkson is, you know, can they get back to the state finals? Can they get by Lake Orion? I mean, they did that last year. I mean, and then, of course, you know, then they've had that issue with Lake Orion in the past, you know, where they have been able to get by them in districts. I mean, could could the MHA decide, you know, could they could they split Clarkson and Lake Orion up? It, it's possible. They could do it. But, but I'm not sure when they release their districts in June. I mean, like, you know, for volleyball and then basketball and um, both girls and boys basketball. So, so a lot of questions for the MHA to um, – look at when they released their districts. I mean, they did release their enrollment sheet, um, went in depth a little bit last week on it. Um, you know, we talked about the enrollment list, um, some really interesting teams. I'm going in and out of D1 to D2 and D3. So, but back to the Allison Smith hire, I think the question is going to be is can Smith get those players to buy in the system? And if they do, look out. If they don't, that could be some trouble. So. But you do have some players, some talented players coming back, um, some emerging freshmen as well that could do some damage as well. So when you really look at Clarkston, I mean, this team could be really, really good heading into next year. So I really, I really think they got a good hire with Smith. Smith brings a lot of experience. Um, if the question, but the questions are still out. So. So when you really look at it, um, um, I think Clarkson could be a team to um, to watch, and I really believe that um, you know they lost to Birmingham Marion last year. They lost to um, 
they um and I know for sure that they're going to be hungry to want to get back into the state fight and the state conversation. So, you know, so Clarkson for sure will be ranked for sure in the state. Um, they're going to have a lot of talent back. Um, but we're going to see where they're at. We're going to really see where they're at going forward. So it's a good hire, in my opinion, I think, to go with um, with an experienced coach. He's going to bring a ton of energy. Um, you know, she did that when she was at Mount Pleasant. Um, you know, but I'm curious to see how it's going to go at Clarkson. So that's the one I'm keeping an eye on very carefully. So that's my thoughts on the, um, Clarkson hire. Um, let's go to my spring sports preview. Um, obviously, um, if you saw on Sunday, I wrote a column on, um, top five teams. Um, I didn't put tennis nor, um, water polo on there yet. Um, and I will do that eventually. Um, but I've got some ideas when you look at the spring sports season. Obviously, of course, um, last season the MHA did not have a spring season because of the coronavirus shutdowns and everything. So, And I did everything the best I could, you know. But what I'm seeing right now um, is where I'm seeing early on. Um, I'm going to go with baseball first. I'm going to start with my top five surrounding baseball. Um, when you look at teams that um have been impressive to me, obviously West Bloomfield. Um, I've really liked their pitching staff, I've really liked their hitting, they're balanced. Um, this Laker team, they've been rolling. I've looked at the Twitter feeds of West Bloomfield's baseball team and they've been on a roll. And West Bloomfield's a team that could definitely be um really, really high on and um you know, I really like this West Bloomfield team um, going forward. Um, there's another team that I really like, um, and that's Adams. And I know a couple months ago, um, Joe Johnson and I, we talked about Parker Picot and how he's a, he's a very good athlete, very good football player, um, very good baseball player. He com- I think he committed to Alabama for baseball. Um um, so when you really look at um, what Parker Pico brings, um, very effective player, very good player. Um, I was a little curious to see how he would be a quarterback, you know, with Adams. So I think when you look at Adams, um, their baseball team this year, um, there's a lot of high upside surrounding Adams. Um, I think that this is a team that could, they could make some noise in their district in the postseason. Um, I think Adams could be a team that is in a discussion to do, um, to do a lot of great things this year. I really think Adams, you know, could they be, I mean, like when you look at obviously in the state champions, state champs, top 25, um, actually not the MHA's top 25, um, no OA team was ranked and I was a little disappointed about that, but I think there's several teams that could be ranked in there. I mean, starting with West Bloomfield. Adams could be in that discussion. Um, and then, of course, you got um, my number three ranked team, North Farmington. Um, and it starts with Ryan Shelby. They're, um, I mean, like, he's a very good athlete for North Farmington. He's expected to be their starting quarterback next year for the Raiders. I mean, like, I've heard a lot of good things about Ryan Shelby um, or Alex Shelby. Um, I think North Farmington is going to be a very dangerous team. I mean... I mean, a lot of I've heard a lot of high expectations surrounding North Farmington. I've heard a lot of um, a lot of positive surrounding them. So that's a team I'm watching very carefully is North Farmington. Um, and then there's Lake Orion. I mean, Lake Orion. When I look at the Dragons, they got a lot of experience. Um, a lot of young, proven experience. I mean, they got balance as well. Um, the Dragons could be a team that I think could surprise some folks this year. Um, I like what Coach Andy Schramick's done with that team. Um, that is a team, you know, um, you know, that is worth keeping an eye on as well. Um, and then my, um, and then of course you got Oxford. Um, Oxford, let's not forget last season, um, you know, they had a really good team. Um, unfortunately, we didn't have the season a year ago, but I really like what they've done. Um, 
Now, despite their non-league schedule, which has not been the greatest thus far, but they still got some players. I mean, Brady Carpenter is um, a really good athlete. I mean, you got some others as well. Um, but when you look at Oxford, I think that that team, Oxford could be a really unique team, especially come postseason time, um, where I think that could be a really, really interesting district. Because I know Lake Orion and Oxford are traditionally in a district together. Um, um, when you really look at Oxford, um, I'm going to be pulling up right now here on my um, the baseball districts. And I think the baseball districts look to be really interesting um, when you look at them. Um, obviously, of course, they're, they're a little different compared to compared to past years. So when you really look at them, um, when you really look at it, I'm going to go to, I'm going to look at district number um I'm going to look at district number, um, let's see here. Um, I'm going to look at district number, um, I'm going to look at, obviously, um, goodness gracious. I mean, like, um, I'm going to look at district number, um, I'm going to go to district number 31 first, um, and then go up from there. Um, you got, at Lapeer, you got Clarkston, Davison, Lake Orion, Lapeer, and Oxford. Um, when I look at this district here, Clarkston's had a, on, they got a new manager, new coach. Um, obviously, then you have Lake Orion and Oxford there as well. Um, I really don't see Davison or Lapeer really being threats in that in that district. Um, but I still think you know it's going to come down to I think Lake Orion versus Oxford um, in that one. Um, district thirty um, over at Water Vermont, you got Avondale, Troy, Troy, Athens, Water for Cuttering, Water Vermont. Um, you know, Troy, Troy, Athens, especially Troy, Athens has had a, um, has been predominantly pretty good in baseball. Avondale's had a nice start to the year. Um, but I just think, um, but you know, Troy's a dark horse team. So I think the 308 team's got a good chance there to win that, that district. Um, district 29 at Adams, of course, you got the three Rochesters, Rochester, Adams, Stony Creek, Romeo, Utica, Eisenhower. Um, this will be a good district, I think. But I still think at the end of the day, I still think Adams will win this one here. I think Stony Creek will have a say. But I just think Adams right now, especially with the play of Parker Pico, has been playing outstanding ball. Um, and then, of course, we have um, district number. Um, and, of course, I'm going up. We have district 24 at Royal Oak. You got um, Berkeley, Groves, Ferndale, Royal Oak, and Warren Mott. Um, I think Groves will be a good team to beat, but watch out for Berkeley. I think Berkeley's a team that could do some damage as well. Um, I think the two teams to watch for sure are Berkeley and Groves. Um, I'm surprised Ferndale's in Division One for baseball, um, but they've had they've had some good teams. I mean, like in the past, Royal Oak's been really struggling, but I'm curious to see what happens there in that one. Um, District 23. Um, Hasn't confirmed yet, but you have Detroit Mumford, Detroit Renaissance, UD Jesuit, Oak Park, and Southfield. Um, I just don't, until anybody beats Detroit Renaissance or UD Jesuit, um, I think it's going to be at UD Jesuit, but we'll see what happens there. Um, district number 22 at Birmingham Borough of the Rice, you have Seahome, Bloomfield Hills, North Farmington, West Bloomfield, and Birmingham Borough of the Rice. Um, Borough of the Rice would be, probably be the team to beat. But keep an eye on Bloomfield Hills and especially West Bloomfield. Um, those are two teams to keep an eye on for sure. Um, and then, of course, you have District 21 at Livonia Franklin. You got Farmington, Livonia Churchill, Livonia Franklin, Livonia Stevenson, Redford Thurston. That could be a good... I think Farmington's got a shot at this one here. But but Livonia Stevenson's really good this year. Um, I just think it'll be very challenging for Farmington, even though I think Farmington's going to have a good year. I think they're going to have a good team. I mean, so that that's going to be curious to see how Farmington will look um, going forward. Um, and then, of course, you know, I'm looking at I'm looking at Division Two here. I'm seeing if Pontiac or um, is building a team this year, and it doesn't look like they are. So, so you know, so that is the um that is the districts for baseball surrounding um that's the districts for baseball um and my top five for baseball um let's go to softball now of course um my top five for softball 
Um, obviously, of course, my um, top team is Stony Creek, especially with them, the way they've been playing early on. Um, Clarkston, my number two team. I just can't figure out what's going on with them. I mean, I know they got a young team, obviously, um, but they did not look good against Stony Creek. They lost twice to them. I mean, there's been some games where they've just, they've lost some games where they just truly didn't look very good. Um, Lake Orange my number three team. I mean, Lake Orange has been an odd team to figure out lately. Um, so I'm curious to see what happens there um, with them. Um, Rochester, my number four team. Um, defense is a concern. They can score for sure, but they give up a ton of runs. Um, Troy is my number five team. Um, other teams to watch for are Adams um, and Groves. Those are teams to keep an eye on as well. I mean, like, so... So when I look at the um at softball, obviously, and also Troy Athens is another one to watch. Um, so those are my teams I'm keeping. I'm really high on this year in the softball ranks. Um, the districts, of course, they were released the other day. Um, of course, I'm gonna go from I'm gonna go from district number um thirty thirty. I'm gonna go up to um. I'm going, to, I'm going to start at District 30, which will be held at Troy. Um, you got Troy, Troy, Athens, Utica, Utica, Eisenhower. Um, this one's interesting because I think it's going to come down to both Troy schools. I mean, I'm not sold on either Utica or Utica Eisenhower, even though Utica Eisenhower could have a say. Um, but I just think Troy and Troy Athens, the way both teams are playing, I think they could do some damage. Um, so I'm curious to see what happens there. And then you have District 29, the three Rochesters and Lake Orion. Um, Rochester, Rochester, and Stony Creek. Um, this one's interesting because Stony Creek's played really well. Lake Orion's a team. I'm curious to see what happens with them. Um, Rochester's been Rochester's not been bad as well. I mean, like, this will be a tough district. I think District 29 at Stony Creek, it's gonna be a really difficult district. So I'll be curious to see what happens there in that one. District 28 at Groves. You got um Groves, Seahome, Bloomfield Hills, West Bloomfield. Um, this would be very interesting. Um, I think the favorites would be West Bloomfield. I give them a slight edge over Groves. Um, you know, so I'm curious to see what happens there. Um, in that one, but I I would give a slight edge to West Bloomfield. Um. District 27 at Water for Mott. You got Abendale, Clarkston, Kettering, Mott. Um, until anybody touches Clarkston, I'm just taking the Wolves in that one. Uh, District 26 at the Boney Stevenson. You got Farmington, Farm Trails, Mercy, the Boney Stevenson, North Farmington, and Novi. Until, like I said, jury's still out. Until anybody touches Farm Trails, Mercy, maybe the Boney Stevenson might have a chance there. Um, we'll see what happens there in that one. Um, and then, um, District 22 at Sterling Heights, you got Royal Oak, Sterling Heights, um, Warren Cousineau, um, Warren Mott, Warren Regina, um, like I said, I, I think Warren Regina is going to be the favorite coming out of that one, um, so it'll be tough for Royal Oak, you know, to win that one at Sterling Heights, but until anybody touches Warren Regina, I don't think like anybody's touching the satellites, so it'll be very interesting to see what happens there. District 21, um, you got Berkeley, Detroit Renaissance, Ferndale, Oak Park, and A&T. Same thing. Until um, anybody touches Renaissance, you know what I mean? I just don't see anybody coming out of that one and winning that one. Um, and then let's go to district number... Um, let's go to district number... District number four is at Grand Blank. You got Davison, Grand Blank, Holly, Lapierre, and Oxford. Lapierre's been traditionally pretty good in softball. Um, so when you really look at this one here, Oxford's got a shot at this thing to win it, you know, but Grand Blank's been playing really good softball lately as well. I mean, like, so when you really look at it here, I think it's going to come down to Davison. No, it's going to come down to Grand Blank, Lapierre, and Oxford, I think are going to be your teams to watch in that district. So. That's my thoughts on softball right now, the top five teams there. Um, let's go to track and field. Um, boys track, obviously, Oak Park's my top team, of course, until anybody touches the Knights. I mean, like, um, Oak Park's the team to beat, really. But I've been really, in, 
really impressed with the way that these two teams have been playing, and it's Adams and Farmington. Both these teams are 2-0. and Both these teams have balance. Um, Farmington doing very well in the blue. Um, Adams doing really well in the red. Of course, that win, both wins against Lake Orion and, um, and um, Clarkson have been really, really huge for both. For, for Adams, they got balance. I mean, they got sprints. They got distance relays. I mean, like Adam, both these, and including Farmington as well. I mean, like they're rolling as well. So, so Adams my number two team right now. Um, Farmington's my number three team right now. Um, Lake Orion's my number four team. Um, you know they came off that really tough loss to um, to um Adams, and then they knocked off Oxford. Um, so when you really look at Lake Orion, um, this team, I mean, like. Lake Orion, they they got some work to do. You know, if they want to get back in the league race, um, you know, they're gonna have to um, they're gonna have to find um, I mean, they're starting to find their identity a little bit. But Lake Orion's gonna be a team that they've got a. It's not the same team from years past, but they can bounce back from this. I mean, obviously. So when you look at Lake Orion, um, you know, I think the Dragons are gonna be fine. So when you look at them, um, Clarkson's my number five team. Um. For one and one, of course, Ben Haas has been doing really well in the throws. Um, do a fifty-one footer the other day. Um, he's been playing. He's been really outstanding for Clarkston. Um, all season long. Um, I do. They do got some questions. So, but I really like the play of Clarkston. Uh, I mean, like especially, and there's a lot of other teams that are one and one as well. So you know to look at as well. But these are my top five teams in the boys' track ranks right now. On the girls' side, until anybody touches Oak Park, as I said, you know, their girls' team is very good. Their boys' team is really good. I mean, state powers. I mean, both these teams are state powers. Um, so whenever we look at whenever we look at um Oak Park, you know, until somebody touches the Knights, it's gonna be a long year. So whenever we look at Oak Park, especially when it comes in the regional and the state rounds, the state tournaments, this is a team to keep an eye on for sure when you look at Oak Park. Um, Seahome's my number two team. People ask me, why Seahome? And I think the reason why I say this is because of Audrey DiMaggio. I mean, like, DiMaggio. I mean, like, she's been outstanding for Seahome. Um, really good in the distance. I mean, now they do got some questions in sprints. I mean, like, but Seahome, um, they're going to rely a lot on DiMaggio and DiMaggio to carry them. And I think, you know, she's going to be the key. I mean, like, if... If she gets hurt or anything, that could lead to some serious trouble for Seahome's girls. And, you know, but right now, when you look at the Maples, it's everything flows through DiMaggio right now. Um, Adams, my number three ranked team. I mean, like, as mentioned with Adams, they got tons of balance, like their boys' team. Um, Coach Eric Lohr's done a really good job with that team. Um, they've got experience. They got a lot of youth in the wings. I mean, they got balance in the field events. They got balance in the in the sprints, the distance. I mean, like Adams is a team that I've really, really liked. Um, and then my number four team is is Troy. Um, obviously, the dark horse team to watch. They had a nice one against Stony Creek the other day. Um, I really like the direction the Colts have been at. Um, you know, I think Troy. You know, I think Troy is going to be a team to watch. And then Farmington, they're balanced right now. I mean. You know, they got sprints, they got distance. I mean, Val Pallet's doing really well in the throws. Their throws program their throws program is an absolute powerhouse. I mean, you got at least if you have at least three, four, five throwers that are throwing like that, that's absolutely insane. So but Farmington definitely my number five ranked team right now. Now people are gonna ask me why didn't I put Clarkson on this list? And I'll tell you why. It's simple. I mean, Clarkson, and I've been saying this to, um, I've been saying this, and I said this to Ian, to Ian, my co-host, on numerous occasions. And I said, Clarkson has the distance. They had the distance, but where's the sprinting? Where's the balance? You know what I mean? And I think that's the problem I have with Clarkson, is they just don't have that balance. And I know it's got to make, I know it's got to make them nuts. I mean, like, obviously, when you look at the Wolves, I mean, like, you got you you got great athletes in the distance events. But when it comes, when it comes down to 
the other events, that could be a big problem, you know. And I know, um, and I know them, you know what I mean? Like, um, but that's the that's the concern I have with Clarkson. That's why I didn't put Clarkson in my top five in track and in girls track and field right now. I just until they get that balance, you know what I mean? I can't trust them right now. So that's my thoughts on girls track right now. Um, early indicators. Um, let's go now to girls soccer. Um, you know, when I look at soccer, obviously, um, you got to start with Stony Creek, um, state title contender. Um, you know, I think the Cougars, this is a very dangerous team. Um, they're going to, they're state ranked. Um, um, so I think Stony Creek right now, they are the standard bearers right now, the OA. Now people are going to ask me, what about the two Troy schools? Troy, Troy, Athens. I mean, they haven't really played a league game yet, you know, and I really haven't been able to judge both those two teams yet. So I'll be curious to see how both those two teams adjust this season. So, so if you wonder why I don't put Troy in my Troy, Troy, Athens in my top five, that's probably why, um, I didn't make mention of that. So. Rochester is my number two team here. Um, Rochester, they're starting to turn things around a little bit. Um, they've had they had a nice win against Farmfields Mercy. Um, so I'm curious to see what Rochester does going forward. Adams, my number three team. Experience matters. Um, good goalkeeping and Molly Delinga, uh, Maddie Delinga. Um, I mean they got some balance as well. So Adams, my number three ranked team there. Um. Oxford is my number four team, and people ask me about Oxford. Is do they get rely on one player too much? And that is Mackenzie Metner. I mean, like, you know, and I think Oxford's been really, really good. I know Mackenzie Metner's been really good, but you know, when you look at, of course, Oxford, um, they're gonna get tested, and I don't know. The schedule hasn't really been that impressive for Oxford. Um, but I'm curious to see how they do the rest of their league, especially when they take on their arch rival on Tuesday night in Lake Orion. Um, be curious to see what happens there in that one. Then Lake Orion is my number five team. Um, experience matters. Lake Orion has a ton of that. Um, you know, when you look at players like, um, Melissa Norman, Bridget Finneran, um, you know, among others, um, I like what Coach Chris Corteg has done with that team. Um, really, really athletic, really experienced. Um, I mean, like, it's going to be very interesting to see what Lake Orion has this season. So that's my number five team right now. Now, people have asked, I asked earlier about both Troys. Um, you know, I just, the jury's out on them. I haven't seen them play yet. So be curious to see what happens with that, both schools going forward um, with both Troy schools. Um, let's go to boys lacrosse. Um, my number five team is Adams. Um, had a nice year thus far. Um, Bloompia Hills is my number four team. Um, traditionally a lacrosse power. Clarkston, of course, um, my number three team. Um, Clarkston's a tough out, you know what I mean? And people have asked me, you know, they, they've had some years where they were down, then they had a bounce back year two years ago. Then last season, of course, all with COVID and all that, but I just think that um, I think Clarkston, you know, I think they're gonna have, they're probably gonna have a big year. Um, I really think Clarkston lacrosse um, they're gonna be in for a good year. I really like where this team's at. Um, they're coming back with a vengeance, and I think Clarkston's a team to keep an eye on. Um, Lake Orion's my number two team. Um, I know I. I watched the Lake Orion Birmingham United game, um, and I noticed one thing Lake Orion did not have, and that was Cade Manzo. Um, Cade Manzo did not play in that game against Birmingham United. Um, I did wonder if he did play. I think that's a different outcome. Um, and then Birmingham United is my number one ranked team. Um, they're my number one team for now, especially that win against Lake Orion. Um, but I just think, you know, I'd be curious to see how Birmingham United does against Clarkston. Um, I think it's going to be really interesting to see what happens in that game between um, the Bulldogs and the Wolves. And I think that could be a real interesting game between those two teams. Um, girls lacrosse, um, you know, my number five team is Lake Orion. Um, I think the Dragons are a team that, you know, they look good early on. Um, 
I mean, they they played well. Um, this is a team that I think could do some damage. Um, so when I look at Lake Orient, they could surprise some people a little bit. Um, Troy at is my number four team. Um, they're just finding your way a little bit. Um, obviously when you look at Troy Athens, um, Clarkson's my number three team. Um, you know, Clarkson, they've always been tough. They performed expectations. Um, you know, so when you look at Clarkson, you know, they are a team that can be a, um, they're really good. I really like where this Clarkson team's been at. Um, playing good, playing good, um, good girls, good, playing good lacrosse. I mean, like, um, Goodness, I'm still in fall and winter mode. You know what I mean? I mean, like, you know, with all the springs, with all the spring sports, you know. Um, and then my number two team is Bloomfield Hills. Um, 65 and six the last four games. That says a lot for for them. I mean, they've been rolling. Um, and then um, you know, they've been they've been rolling. And then my number one team, of course, is Birmingham United. Um, obviously, um, you know, they've been. They're the standard bearer of the uh, of girls lacrosse in the OA. They're, they're the standard bearers. Um, I'm gonna use a quote from Ric Flair to describe the Bulldogs. Um, to be the man, you gotta beat the man. Um, and I to be the team, you have to beat the team. And that tied you Birmingham United. I mean, they're a very dangerous team. I mean, I know I get emails from um from their coaches, you know, about you know their highlights and all that. I've I've seen Birmingham United play. I mean, this is a really good team. I really like where this this team has been at. Uh, when you look at Birmingham United, um, this is a team I, I think could be in line for another trip to the state final. I really like this Birmingham United team, and I think they're going to do some damage um, this season. Them and Bloomfield Hills right now, in my opinion, the girls across are the two standard bearers of they're the two standard bearers right now. So when you really look at it, you know, it is what it is. So, you know, so um, that's my thoughts there right now. Um, tennis, of course. Um, Clarkson's obviously my top team. Adams, my number two team. Um, um, Seaholm's my number three team. Gro's number four. And um, number five, um, number five is, um, I would have to say, on there, I would put Troy on there in my number five for tennis. So that's my top five early thoughts when it comes to tennis. Um, so when I look at it here and that and that um and that's in that sport, um, tennis would be very interesting to keep an eye on for sure. But I think Clarkson, Adams, Seaholm are going to be your t three teams to watch um, for sure in the um, tennis ranks. Um, let's go to golf. I mean, like boys golf. Of course, we had a state champion last year in Lake Orion. Um, they're still the team to beat. Um, you know, they got, I, they got a couple good golfers there. I mean, like Lake Orion's a team that I think could be a real interesting, um, team to watch for sure. Um, Bloomfield Hills, of course, we know they've had solid programs in the past. Um, the Blackhawks have been a really unique team, um, unique program, um, to keep an eye on. Um, Clarkston is my number three team. Um, last season, of course. In 2019, they went to the state final. Um, they got experience back. I mean, like Clarkson's a team to watch. Adams, my number 14. They just missed out in 2019 to getting to um getting to the um championship round um to the state final. And then um number five is Stony Creek. And the reason why I say Stony Creek, they could be a dark horse to keep an eye on for sure. Um. I think Stony Creek is a team to really keep an eye on going forward. Um, when you look at the um, Cougars, I mean, like, um, you know, so when you really look at it here, um, I did not announce the um, districts, the regionals slash district rounds yet for um, lacrosse, um, track and field. And, um, well, track and field is based on a regional format. So I will go into detail with Ian in a couple of weeks. We'll talk track regionals. Um, we got a lot of track to talk about for sure heading into next season for um, heading into this year. So when my co-host Ian comes back, we will go more directly into track and field conversations um, to close out the season. Um, of course, with baseball, softball, we got a lot to talk about, obviously. Um, I'm curious to see how the season goes. Um, 
And then, of course, the only other sport we forgot to talk about was water polo. Um, you know, water polo will be very interesting. Um, I haven't looked at the top 10, top 5 yet. Um, so I will post that sometime um, during the week. So we'll see what happens going forward there. Um, before I let everybody go, I'm going to release my way too early top 10 for football to start off here. Um, I've been doing a lot of notes. Um, looking at it here, but these are not my official rankings to start the year or anything. Just a, um, a good idea where I think um, teams will land right now to start the season. Um, number 10, I got a Southie day and um, Isaiah Marshall back at quarterback for new coach. Aaron Marshall is a father. Um, I'm curious to see what happens there with that team. Um, they got athletes. <coughs> Line plays a question mark for me. Um, even though they got experience, um, number nine is Lake Orion. Um, the reason why I have Lake Orion here, I'm just very concerned about, um, a couple players. Um, you know, so I'm curious to see what happens there, but if everything goes together with Lake Orion, I think the Dragons could be a team to keep an eye on going forward there. Um, number eight is Berkeley. I really like the direction coach John Shields has his team going. Um, a lot of experience coming back. Um, I'm curious to see what happens here with the Bears. I mean, like, um, I am high on them this year in the blue, and I think Berkeley's a team to definitely keep an eye on um, this season. Farmington, new coach. Um, they got Jacob Saunders back. Um, that matters a lot. Um, Farmington's a team that I think could be a dangerous team um, in the blue this year. Um so that's a team I'm keeping on for sure. Oak Park's my number six ranked team. I think the Knights, um, they had that incredible run last year, um, going from winless to um almost getting the state final. They were at least a um they were a um fumble away from getting to the um state final a year ago. So that's my number six ranked team. Uh, my top five, Oxford's my number five team. Experience matters when you look at the Wildcats. I mean, like I mean, like, they do have Mitchell Viviano. They got a very good line, a couple good linemen coming back. Um, but everything starts with Brady Carpenter. And Brady Carpenter is going to have to do a lot more this year. Um, I thought Oxford offensively played really well early on. But but they ended up um, but they ended up only scoring 10 points the final, the final four weeks of the season. That cannot happen. Um, if Oxford wants to do some damage going forward there. Um, Stony Creek's my number four ranked team. Um, the Cougars, um, they did lose a lot of talent a year ago, but, you know, I think that talent can be replenished. I think Nick Merlo has done a really good job with Stony Creek. Um, I really like where the Cougars are at going forward. Um, I'll be curious to see what happens with them, um, how they're going to handle the... Um, adjustment period, the transition period. So I'm curious to see what Stony Creek does this upcoming season um, with them. Um, number three is Clarkston. Um, Clarkston, of course, let's not forget, you got Mike DePillo quarterback. You got Davis York at running back. Um, you got, of course, um, Cole Dillinger, likely Aker in both offensive, defensive lines. I'm, I'm very concerned about the lines over at Clarkston. Um, you know, I'm curious to see how the pillow's going to do in his senior season. Um, you know, especially because I know he's coming off a knee injury. He should be healthy enough to be back um, from that injury that he suffered during basketball season. So I'm mean, curious to see what Clarkson has this upcoming season, despite losing a ton of talent, um, especially up front with Rocco Spindler and Garrett Dillinger, both now in Division One colleges at Notre Dame and um, Louisiana State, respectively. So... I'm curious to see what happens there with Clarkston. Um, number two is Adams, um, the Highlanders. Um, I love this team's got a lot of experience back. Logan Patera is a guy I'm really high on to keep an eye on. I know Parker Pico is one of is a very good, um, very good quarterback, um, very good athlete. Um, but Logan Patera is the one I'm keeping an eye on very carefully. I really like where um where Adams is at right now um, as a program right now. And Tony Petrino's done a really good job 
with that program. And my number one team, of course, is the defending Division One state champions in West Bloomfield. Uh, so when I look at the Lakers, um, Coach Grice now taking over the reins for Coach Ron Bellamy. Um, so I'm curious to see how um, this is going to go. I mean, like with West Bloomfield, they got a lot of athletes. Um, I really like the Lakers going forward. I just think that the Lakers are a team that could do some damage as well. So when I look at West Bloomfield, obviously this is going to be a very dangerous team um, going forward. So when I look at West Bloomfield, um, you know, I think they could be in line for another playoff or a long full season run. I mean, like, I really like the direction this team is going. Um, program strength, I'm curious to see how um, Coach Grice is going to do with program strength. Obviously, um, now that Coach Ron Bellamy is no longer there. So that's something to keep an eye on for sure when you really look at West Bluefield going forward. So that is my top 10 teams for football early on. Um, they're not my official top 10 as I do for football season to start the year. Um, but I'm curious to see what happens. Um, I'm very curious to see what happens um, this upcoming fall for football. Um, but those are my early top 10 teams right now is that list. So we'll see what happens. Things could change, obviously. Um, Things could change, obviously. Um, I know on my um on my blog at Sammy Semicolon at terminatblogspot.com, if people want to ask questions about where I see these teams um in the spring, you know what I mean? Just give me a ho just give me a holler and I will respond back to you, everybody that I can. So, you know, those are my thoughts on spring sports heading into the year. Um Obviously, um, we talked about the Harper Woods situation. Of course, they're joining the league um next winter, so so I'll be curious to see how they do, especially in basketball. Um, you know, so we'll see what happens going forward there. Um, surrounding them, and then of course the volleyball situation at Clarkston. Um, with Allison Smith taking over. Um, so a lot of things you know have happened this past week around the OAA. So we'll see what happens going forward there. All right, my final thoughts of the week, of course, I do encourage everybody to stay healthy, um, stay safe in this. Of course, you know, um, as for me, this is my first trip back to the studio since I'm um, getting the virus. It was not a fun experience. I'll tell you everybody that much right now. Um, you don't want this thing. You don't want, you don't want this thing. So, so I'm telling everybody to stay strong, mask up, um, get vaccinated, um, you know, and, We'll get through this together. So, okay, now everybody, I'm going to sign it off here um, this week on the podcast here. Um, make sure um, everybody stays with the blog at Sammy Semicolon Termina Blogspot.com um, for the latest updated information surrounding the OAA. Um, also on the ON TV blog as well. I mean, I do post some special stuff on that blog as well. Okay, everybody, I'm going to sign off here. Um, take care, everybody. God bless y'all. See y'all next week, everybody. Take care. See you next week.